Good morning, New Zion. Today's Sunday School lesson, taken from Isaiah 42, verses 1 through 9, God's Just Servant. Before we get into the lesson, let us go to the throne in grace. Paul, in his epistles to the Romans, wrote concerning that which is time. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time that we awake out of our sleep. For our salvation is nearer than what we believed. The night is far spent, but the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the curse of darkness and take on the full armor of light. Heavenly Father, we come to you asking you to open our hearts and our minds that we might receive your word. That in these times, O oh Heavenly Father, we look solely to you as our rock and our salvation. These and each and other blessings we ask in your name. Amen. The Bible background for today's text, Isaiah 42. The printed text is Isaiah 42, 1 through 9. Devotional reading is Psalm 98. Aim for change. By the end of the lesson, we will explore the concept of Messiah. Since the wonder of Jesus' role as servant to the nations and imitate Jesus as a servant of God who executes justice. Keep in mind Isaiah 42 and 1. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him, he shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Typically, whenever I'm studying scripture, I always ask myself two questions. Number one, what does the Bible say? And number two, so what? How do I apply that to my everyday life? The focal verses, Isaiah 42, 1 through 9, the King James Version. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him, he shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flack shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail, nor be discouraged till he have set judgment in the earth, and the owls shall wait for his law. Thus saith God the Lord, he that created the heavens and stretched them out, he that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, he that giveth breath unto the people upon it, and spirit to them that walk therein. I the Lord have called thee in righteousness, and will hold thine hand, and will keep thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles. To open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoner from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Before we discuss the chapters 42, 1 through 9, let us step back a little bit to try to give a little bit of introduction and, and show how we kind of got to this point. 
We know that Isaiah stood at the peak of Old Testament as the literary genius of the prophets. His chapters and his ministry were the longest in the Bible, 66 chapters to be exact. His chapters were broken down into two parts. Chapters 1 through 39 was called the Book of Judgments, in which he depicts the sins of Judah. Chapters 40 through 66 is called the Book of Comfort, and it looks a century and a half to when Judah, which had been in captive by Babylon, were about to go into exile. His books also looked into prophecy farther than any other the prophets. And we know that the end of exile was foreseen in the chapter preceding our lesson text. God had called one into righteousness to release Babylon from captivity. And we know that that was Cyrus, who was the king of Persia. Uh, he allowed and he defeated Babylon and was able to allow the Israelites to return to Jerusalem. And we know that the term servant was used many times in Isaiah. God himself had referred to Israel as my servants. And a servant does the bidding of the master. But we know that Israel could not keep up and be as the servant that God would help them to be. Because they worship golden images. And he even brought them to court and asked them to bring a case where any of their golden images or their golden calf could predict the future and could do as he did. And in chapter 41, at the last verse, 29, he says, Behold, they are all vanity. Their works are nothing. Their molten images are wind and confusion. So from this we can see that Israel, they could not be the servant that God would have them to be. We know that Cyrus was a pagan king, and he did a lot of great things, but they could not be the kind of servant that God had wished him to be. Sort of like in today's times, as we are going through this COVID-19, there are a lot of good things that are going on. There's a stimulus package of some $2 trillion, but the coronavirus is still being multiplied. There are social distancing that people would have us to do to help keep the virus from spreading washing our hands and we've even come to the point where you can only get one roll of toilet paper but the coronavirus is still at hand so we're at this point now where we come to verse 42 and verse 1 where god now says behold my servant my servant whom i uphold mine elect in whom my soul delighteth I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He is basically saying, Behold my Jesus, my elect, who is going to put all things in order. And we see that this is, it, it, it's, it's again brought forth down in Matthew's during Jesus' baptism, where the spirit of God descended down upon him like a dove and God said this is my son in whom I am well pleased one who are to bring things in order he shall not cry nor lift up nor cause his voice to be heard in the street so God is saying here is my servant Jesus which I have brought forth now to put everything in right order. And there's one other, two other verses that I would like to just touch on a bit before I close, and that is verses 3 and verse 4. A bruised reed shall he not break, 
and the smoking flat shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail nor be discouraged till he have set judgment in the earth and the owls shall wait for his law. I, I just kind of wanted to key on the word judgment and what it probably means here. Not the judgment that we see where a criminal, he, he's convicted and he goes to prison, but it is not that kind of judgment. I think it is where everything is in right relationship to everything else, if that makes sense. Everything is in right relationship to everything else. It is total well-being. It is where chaos is eliminated. An example for if you have great health, then every part of your body is in the right relationship to be well. So this servant, Jesus Christ, whom God has set before us, is to bring everything in right relationship to everything else. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flat shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He's not going to be coming in with any loud bang because he loves us and he has our interest at his heart. So that kind of concludes the Sunday school lesson. Uh, if you have any questions or any comments, you can feed them back maybe through the secretary and someone on the Sunday school class will uh, definitely get back to you. Uh, let us now depart with uh, a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we stand also as clouds of witnesses and let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that is set before him endureth the cross and is now set on the right-hand throne of God. Thank you, Father, for this day, and may each of you have a blessed week.